What are your finances supposed to be? Are you supposed to be the head or are you supposed to be the tail? I am the head. I am prosperous. I am in debt to no man. Tell it what it is. And the duty of faith by the Holy Spirit is to deliver the promises of God to your heart. Don't thank it. I want you to go open your Bibles, please, to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6. Hallelujah. And if you don't have your Bibles, we're going to put it right here on the screen for you. Are you ready? Let's read this out loud together. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Wait a minute. Read that again. Without faith... It's impossible to please God. It's Strong's G4102, the word faith. Strong's G4102, faith. Without faith, say without, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we've established that there's nothing else that pleases him more than faith. Can we say an amen to that? Amen. Let me share with you what Strong's G4102 defines faith as. Are you ready? Okay. Belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence, whether in God or in Christ, springing from faith in the same. Belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence, whether in God or in Christ, springing from faith in the same. Now, now listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Most people associate great faith based on instantaneous and spectacular manifestations. I'm going to say it to you again. Most people measure their faith based upon the experiences of instantaneous and spectacular manifestations. Amen? And I'm here to tell you something. Although I've traveled the globe and healing crusades, seeing the instantaneous and spectacular. I am not here to, 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 to knock those experiences down, but I'm here to tell you something. It is rare. Faith is not always associated with the instantaneous and spectacular manifestations. In fact, they're rare. So the other day, I was listening to a man called Creflo Dollar. Have you ever heard of Creflo Dollar? Amen. So it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'm sleeping, and my oldest son calls me. And he is very, very moved, and moved and and just, just overtaken. You could tell he's been overtaken by the Spirit of God. And he says, Dad, I want you to watch this with me. And while you're watching it, I want to watch it at the exact same time. So he tells me how to cue up on the, on the video to the exact spot. And, I'm, and he keeps saying, Dad, are you watching it, Dad? Are you watching it, Dad? Dad, are you watching it? And I said, I'm watching it. I'm watching it with you, son. Yes, I am. And so together, we're watching Creflo Dollar who was, a, I believe, a great man of faith. Amen. And this is what he says in the video. He says, sometimes God works silently, secretly, and supernaturally. Amen. Say that with me. Say silently, secretly, and supernaturally. Now, as he's teaching this, 
you can tell and see in this video that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is beginning to overtake this man. He is completely away from his notes. He's walking around the sanctuary and he begins to describe to me something which was knocking. I didn't even have socks on, but knocking my socks off. And my son and I together are watching this video together. And this is what else he said. Are you paying attention? Faith does not manifest because you have faith in your faith. Amen. You guys with me on that? Look, for example, faith does not manifest because you worked up enough sweat to repeat a scripture 99,000 times. Amen. Just hear me on something, okay? Faith manifests when the scripture for which you're holding on to has manifested in your heart. It's when you see the reality of that. In your heart. Amen? Faith is not what you decided to do. Are you awake? Faith is not what you decided to do. Faith is what is already done. Now, I loved what he said here because we used to minister all over this world. And what you used to see on television, you never saw me on television because I was down, I was down among the people, thousands of people. I was the one that prayed for the people on the main floor to receive their spectacular and spontaneous miracle. That's what I did all over the world. I was down on the main floor. And before that crusade began, which was usually seven o'clock, Three o'clock and four o'clock in the afternoon, we were hidden in a room in the back of that Colosseum and praying. And when people started coming into the Colosseum, our team would go out into the Colosseum among them and pray for people's miracles. And when he would come out on the platform and the television camera would hit him and he's saying how great thou art, there were already tons of miracles miracles happening in that room. All he was doing was calling them up. And I'm going to tell you something. The ones that made the TV camera were the spectacular and the spontaneous. But the ones in which God was dealing with silently and secretly and supernaturally were hardly ever seen. In fact, 98% of the people that we prayed with in that enormous Colosseum, the hundreds of people we prayed for, God dealt with silently and secretly and supernaturally. Faith is not a thought. Faith is a person. Listen to me. Get this. Say, faith, faith. is a person. And faith can be felt, faith can be touched, faith is a person. And faith is appropriating what he has already done. Say it again. Faith is appropriating and trusting in what God has already done. Now, I said to you, faith is a person. Say faith. faith. Come on, put your hand out. Say faith. Faith, faith, faith is person. a person. He can, felt, he can be felt. He can be touched. Can be touched. Faith, is faith is the person, the person. of the Holy Spirit. I said, faith is the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, in Strong's G4102, it says, faith is the belief with the predominant idea of trust. Faith is the belief in the predominant idea of trusting and having confidence in God or Christ springing from faith. So, Let's go now 
to Romans 10 and verse 17. And I'd love you to throw a hallelujah in there. Good. Thank you. Romans 10, 17. And let's chop this up, cut this up, dice this up. Amen. Now, this teaching comes from years and years and years of wondering about this whole faith thing and confusion. We used to leave, we used to leave the Crusades every time. We used to go sometimes to one or two cities a month. And our team would leave the Crusade, we'd get in the car, and we'd always have the same questions. What happens to all those thousands of people that did not experience the spontaneous supernatural? What happens to them? Now look at me. Mostly everybody that has walked through these, that little door right there. See that little door right there? We've had hundreds and hundreds walk through that little door sick and walk back out that door healed. Hundreds that we will never see again because once they get their miracle, they no longer have a passion to serve the living Christ. And we can say that from years and years of experience. So it is not for me the spontaneous, it is not for me the immediate, as wonderful as those things are. But what about people like you and I that have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and we were heard these voices in our heads telling us that our faith is not working. Anybody heard that voice before? Yeah. So now, let me share something with you in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Read it with me, verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, it's impossible to please God without it. And so now we're told how it comes. Read it again. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How many people want faith? This is how it cometh. So then, stay with me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the spoken word of God. Listen to me. Faith does not come by reading. Faith does not come by memorizing. Stay with me. Faith does not come by hearing me preach unless the words from my heart are inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is not by the preacher which faith comes. It is by the Holy Spirit through the preacher. Amen. It's not by reading the printed page. It's the Spirit that brings life to the printed page. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now hear me on something. The Holy Spirit is the person who speaks the word to our hearts and causes faith to come alive. Ah, there should have been more amens there. Let me think of another way I, I can say this. Faith is a personal revelation. Um, it's a personal revelation to your heart. It's a voice. Faith is not a magic wand. How many people have sought for the magic wand? People used to come to our crusades and, and droves looking for the magic wand. So let me tell you my little journey of healing. Back in 1990, when we first went to that church out there in Orlando, I had very, very negative feelings about that man of God. And I walked to that church, I mean drove to that church, with my L5 disc completely, almost completely, uh, uh, what's that word, degenerated. And I sat there in the back row of that church and watching people go up 
fall on the floor, which freaked me out. <laughs> and then they would get up and be healed. They would be prayed over, they would fall on the floor, and they would be healed. They'd be prayed for, they'd fall on the floor, and they would testify. I went through that hundreds, if not thousands of times. They'd be prayed for, they'd fall on the floor, they'd get up, they were healed. So Mike DeRoche makes his way up to the platform. I thought as long as I got prayed for and fell on the floor, that I would be healed. So I went up, I got prayed for, I fell on the floor, and I didn't get healed. But, but, but wait a minute. Did I? And so, I was so bewildered by that. Wait a minute. They were prayed for, they fell, and they got healed. I think I need to go up there again. I, 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 I think maybe, may, maybe, I was, maybe I was standing in the, in the wrong spot or something. Yeah, that's what it was. I, I should have been standing here, and, 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 and may, maybe it was because I hadn't prayed enough that day. So I go back up, and I was prayed for, and I got slain. That was certainly an evidence that I was going to be healed. And I would get up, and I still walk back to my seat like this. It bewildered me. Not for a day, not for a week, but for months. It bewildered me. It caused me to question my faith. And, and, and so this went on, and this went on, and, and this went on, and this went on for such a long time that one day, Anita and I were driving home from church. Now, in the process of wanting to be healed, right, and being prayed for and falling down and getting up and being prayed for and falling down and getting up, in the process of this all, I stopped taking my focus off of my healing. My focus, church, listen to me, my focus became on Christ Jesus and off of my problem. I didn't do it voluntarily. I, I didn't. And so I remember driving home from Orlando Christian Center one particular day, this is months later, and sitting in the car driving, for which I would always be in terrible pain. You know, when your L5 disc is degenerated, it is extremely painful. There were spasms that I would have sometimes lasted for two weeks. I would literally be on the floor for two weeks. So this one particular day, we're driving home from the church. And then, as I'm sitting there driving, and if you haven't seen me already, you'll notice when I drive the car, especially on long distances, my left leg is on the dashboard. Anybody seen me drive like that before? So I'm driving home from Orlando Christian Center, and that left leg goes up on the dashboard. And I went, wait a minute. Hang on a second here. And I'm moving in the chair, and go, gosh, hang on a second here. Silently, secretly, supernaturally, so I, 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 I get home, and, and, I'm, and I'm perplexed by this. I'm, and I'm trying every which way to make it hurt and to make it react, and, 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 I, and I can't. And I'm thinking, what is that all about? I, had, I was healed the first day I believed. Now looking back at it, I'm somewhat embarrassed. But yet, at the same time, I'm so glad that I was not one of those statistics, because I would have been, that walked in the back door of that anointed church and got healed the first day, church, because I would have walked out and never came back again. Silently, secretly, supernaturally, the Holy Spirit was working on my heart more than my body. Amen. 
I get people every week, almost every single week, I either go out on a call or I get somebody asking me a question. Why hasn't God healed me? Well, now I have an answer. My dear, he's working with you silently, secretly, supernaturally. So let me tell you now how this all fits in. So then, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing in your heart, by the Spirit, the words of Christ. Faith comes by hearing the inspired words of Christ. Faith comes by intimacy with him. Faith comes by spending time with him. Faith does not come through the flesh. Faith comes by the revelation of God's word. Faith is the assurance revealed to our hearts, whether we're walking around sick or not. Faith is the assurance by the Holy Spirit revealed to our hearts by the person of the Holy Spirit that God is able, that God is real. Are you catching this? Are you catching this? I've got a, something the Lord is telling me here. I've got I've to just back up and re-explain something. You can't muster up faith. You can't muster it up. You can't work it up. Have you ever prayed for someone that died and you thought somehow your faith was ineffective? Huh? You been there? Yeah, I know more of you have. And you thought you did something wrong. You didn't cross every T and dot every I. Faith is the assurance revealed to your heart. Say it again. Faith is the assurance revealed to your heart, not your head, but by the person of the Holy Spirit. Look at John chapter 16 and verse number 13. How be it when he, who is the he? The you better believe it. The spirit of truth is come, capital H, will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, he shall speak, and he will show you all things. He will glorify me. He will receive of mine. Watch this. He, the Holy Spirit, watch this. He will receive of mine and he will show it to you. Wow. Oh, wow. All things, verse 15, all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore say I, read it with me. He shall take of what is mine and show it unto you. In a little while, you shall not see me. And again, in a little while, you shall see me. Are you catching this? Are you catching this? No, no, no. Now let's go to the next verse. Watch this. And then some of the disciples among them said, what, what the heck did he do? He just, a little while you shall not see me, and again a little while you'll see me, and all. I, I, I don't understand this. In a little while, you shall not see me. But in a little while, I am going to my Father, and you shall see me. 
Faith is a person for whom he has promised to live inside of you. But first, he must go to the Father. Now I got it. In a little while, you will not see me. My dad told me before he died, he says, in a little while, you will not see me anymore. Don't cry. But in a little while, you will see me. Amen. You know, me and my brother Jack talk about this all the time. And this is another typical example. There is probably not a sermon that me and my brother Jack preach that my dad is not mentioned because he is here. Do you see the point? So now, faith is a person. Faith is a person. Are you with me, church? Faith is the apprehension and conviction and belief in a person that lives inside of me. And no matter what the doctors say, no matter what my friends say, no matter what the world says, I know that faith lives in me. All I need to do is apprehend that. Are you with me? Say, all I need to do is apprehend that. You understand me? Now, I'm almost done. Can you give me 10 more Mike DeRoche minutes? Pay attention. Take a deep breath of air. Come on. Look at me. Look, when Jesus walked on this earth, he was limited to being only in a place in which his physical body could take him. He was limited to Israel. He could not be with every person at every moment of every day at all times. When he said, in a little while you shall not see me, and again, in a little while you shall see me, means when he sent his Holy Spirit after his ascension, he could be with each and every one of us at all times. See, faith could only be heard from one man at one time in Jerusalem. And now, listen to me, and now faith is heard in every heart in this room, around this globe, simultaneously at one specific glorious moment. That's the spirit of faith. Are you with me? So, for faith to come, come on, say it with me, say, for faith to come, he had to go. Say, for faith to come, he had to go. And when he went, he sent him in my heart. Faith is a person. I said, faith is a person. Now, look at Luke 17, 5. Read it with me. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase my faith. Our faith. Read it again. Increase our faith. Put your hands to heaven and say, Lord, Lord increase, increase our faith. Wow. And then the Lord gives an answer. The Lord gives an answer. Read it in verse 6. That word Lord in Greek means the possessor of life. And the Lord said, comma, next word, stop, if, if, conditional, if you had faith 
as a grain the size of a piece of rice. Listen to me. He said, if you had faith the size of a piece of rice and smaller than that, right? You might say unto this sycamore tree, comma, B. State of being, if you have faith. Thou plucked up. Past tense, now the present. Past tense, now the present. Be plucked up. Be healed. Be delivered. If you had the faith to say to be the state of being. Say be healed if you had that faith if you had that faith if you had that faith be plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and if and it should obey you wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait now this gets a little confusing for me Faith will obey me. Amen. What? Amen. The person of faith will obey me. Amen. What's the condition? Wait a minute. I want you to get this. You got to get this. You got to get this. You got to get this. Lord, they got to get this. Everybody's got to get this. Faith will obey you. That sounds kind of goofy at first, doesn't it? Okay, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Say faith, faith is appropriating that which already is. Faith is appropriating that which already is. And if I can do that, listen to me now, come on, don't fall asleep. If I can do that, faith obeys me. Faith obeys me. Now, I'm not making this up. Am I making this up? No. Be it now, be it done. Past tense. See it. Be it now, be it done, past tense, see it, and faith, the person of faith, will grant to you the desires of your heart because those desires first came from the will of God. Amen. But I first have to, G4102, believe with a predominant idea of trust. Wow. Mmm. That's good. However, sometimes silently, huh? Sometimes secretly, sometimes supernaturally, apprehending the realities of what already is. And now in verse 7, he describes the duty of faith. Don't you dare lose me now. You stay, you stay focused on me now. Come on. Verse 7. Read it with me. Which of you? having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. Verse 8, and will not rather say unto him, make ready whereas I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Verse 9, does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? No. Verse 10, so likewise. When you, have, when you shall have done all those things which are commanded you say, we are unprofitable servants and we have done that which is our duty to do so. Amen. All right, you've got to get this now in your head because I'm going to wrap this up. Listen to me. When the mailman delivers your mail every day, do you run out to the mailbox and thank him? Why not? Yeah. 
wait a minute now. You guys don't run out to the mailbox Monday through Saturday and go thank the mailman for delivering the mail? You, you don't? Oh, you guys are so mean. You said it's his job. So be it. Now listen, you got to get this. It almost sounds ungrateful, doesn't it? That we, that we should not be thanking the Holy Spirit for doing that which he is called to do. It, 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 there's a tinge of ungratefulness there. But get over it. That's what he does. And that's why I said two weeks ago, pay attention. God help any man or woman that gives the Holy Spirit, your postman, a black eye for delivering mail to the door of your heart. I'm going to say it again. If there's a big check in the mail, and you're waiting for that big check, and you run out to that mailbox every day, how would you feel if your next-door neighbor ran in your mailbox and took that check out and ripped it up? There's a federal fine, imprisonment. How much greater is the man or woman that interferes with the messages of heaven being delivered to the doors of your heart for that for which there is no repentance and for that which there is no sin because faith is the only thing which pleases him and God help the man, God help the woman, God help the evangelist, God help the preacher, God help the teacher that cuts off the flow of faith to your heart. God help them. Yeah. Listen. That is what the Holy Spirit does. It is the duty of the Holy Spirit to deliver the promises of God to your heart. It is His duty duty now do you believe you're supposed to be do you, do you believe you're supposed to walk on this earth and be sick no. no so you tell your body what it's supposed to be to be healed I am healed now it's the duty of faith to deliver that promise to you. This is not the duty of faith. I am healed, 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 I am healed. I am healed. Holy Spirit, manifest that promise in my heart. Don't thank it. Listen to me. I know it seems uncomfortable at first, but don't thank it. That's what he does. You tell your finances what they're supposed to be. You tell it right now what they're supposed to be. What are your finances supposed to be? Are you supposed to be the head or are you supposed to be the tail? I am the head. I am prosperous. I am in debt to no man. Amen. Tell it what it is. And the duty of faith by the Holy Spirit is to deliver the promises of God to your heart. Don't thank it. In the very beginning, I told you without faith. Huh? Are you awake? Are you awake? Don't you dare wander off now. Without faith, it is... How about we slide this in without the spirit of faith? It's impossible to please him. You want to know why? Because any other faith but his faith is all works of the flesh. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Without faith, it's impossible to please Papa. 
we established how faith comes. How does faith come? Does it come by memorizing this? Church, listen to me, please. It doesn't come by memorizing this. I know it impresses you. It really does. It really impresses people when they can quote scriptures off, doesn't it? It impresses me. It used to impress me. Nah. Jeremiah 31, 33 says, I will write the commandments upon your heart. So, faith comes by hearing. Come on, stay with me. Faith comes by hearing who? Huh? Huh? Understand the power of that. He loves you so much. God, help the man who cuts off the flow. We've all sat in churches. where the man or woman of God up here had no clue who the Spirit of God was. But now it's a new day. So, let's put it into action right now. Faith is a person, and he is merely doing his job you need not thank him for doing what he does. Jesus said that. It is what he does. He delivers, come on, he delivers the promises of God to your heart. He delivers the promises of God to your heart. That's his job. That's his job. So, you all know this scripture, and I'm going to close with it. Death and life. Death and life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Say it again, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life, life and death, death and life are in the power of your tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Listen to me. Jesus said, from the abundance of your heart, your mouth shall speak. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, don't you dare try to manipulate faith. Don't you dare try to muster it up or work it up or try to do any of those crazy things. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, sometimes secretly, sometimes quietly, but always supernatural. So I'll close and tell you this. God is healing people right Amen. now. Amen. Right now. Sometimes secretly. Sometimes quietly, but he is healing you. And if you sat here and you're watching me and you thought, Lord, you've forgotten me. No, 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 no. It is the duty of faith to deliver the promises of God to your heart. And that's his duty. 
So put your hands to heaven and do this with me. And tell the Holy Spirit how much you love him. Speak to him. I tell you something. Every time, every time from your heart, you say that name, Holy Spirit, the person of Jesus is delivered to your heart. He says, I shall take and give it to thee. So dear, precious Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you, Holy Spirit. And deliver the promises of God to our hearts. And do your work, Holy Spirit. Say this after me. Say, I am healed. Come on. Is that coming from your heart? Is it coming from your heart? Say, I am healed. I am healed. You guys go without giving the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please feel free to contact us at www.spiritlifeworshipchurch.com. Our phone number is 386-586-2202. And our service begins 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless.